This is a simple example uh, applied to the case where you have a loop of wire. It's a closed loop of wire in the shape of a semicircle. So it has a straight part and a semicircular part, a curved part. The current goes around in a complete loop and it exists in a uniform magnetic field. So we want to get the force, the magnetic force on the straight part and we want to get the magnetic force on the curved part. Of course, if you watch the previous video, you'll know that the total force has to be zero because any wire of any shape, when you put it in a uniform magnetic field, the total magnetic force will be zero. And we, exp we explained it and we derived it before. But now if we want to get the force on each of the parts, the straight part and the curved part, we can do that independently and verify that when you add the total force, you get zero. So first for the straight part, uh, let's call the force on the straight part F1 and it should be I L1 cross B. Remember what this L1 vector was. It was the vector that starts at the beginning of the, of the wire that you're talking about, the part that you're talking about, and ends at the end of the part that you're talking about in the direction of the current. So the L1 vector, if you want to draw it on, to, on this drawing, it will be this vector, L1. Okay, so this is what the force as a vector is. What's the magnitude of the force then? Well, L1 points this way, and the angle between it and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. So the magnitude of this is I L1 B sine 90. And sine 90 is just 1. So we get I L1 B. And the, the, the distance L1 is just twice the radius. So you get L1 is 2R. So you get this for the final value of the force side number 1. Okay, what about the direction of the force on side number 1? Well, the, the direction is obtained from this formula. L1 points to the right and the magnetic field is up. What's the cross product of a vector to the right and a force and a vector on the, to the above the, in the y direction? If you get the cross product, you can show that it's out of the page, which means based on this choice of axes, it's in the, it's in the k hat direction. So if we take the magnitude and we combine it with the direction, which is in the plus k hat direction, then we get the force is 2i rb in the k hat direction. So this is the force on the straight part of the wire only. Okay, let's take the force on the curved part as if it's a separate problem. We know, of course, that it should be the negative of the other one, but let's just prove it on its own. So again, we need to say, let's, let's call the force on the curved part f2, and we need to then find what the vector l2 is for this particular curved part of the wire. What is, the, what is this vector L2? If you go back to the derivation, it was a vector that starts from the beginning of the wire and ends at the end of the wire in the direction of the current. So, and remember where it came from. It came from integrating ds. So we add this vector ds plus this vector ds plus this vector ds plus this plus this. When you add all those vectors, you get one vector that starts from the beginning and ends at the end. Vector L2 is basically this vector right here. And it's just opposite of the vector L1. So if you want to get the magnitude of the force on side 2, then it's the magnitude of this. The magnitude of this is I L2 B sine of the angle between L2 and B. And the angle between L2 and B is 90 degrees. So you get sine 90 is 1. So it's just I L2 B. And since the distance L2 is 2R, then you can write it as 2R. So you get the same magnitude as exactly. Uh, for the straight part. And now what's the direction of the force on the curved part? Well, the direction is obtained by this rule. So L2 is pointing to the left, B is pointing upwards. When you get L2 cross B, it's into the page. And so it's in the minus k hat direction based on these coordinates. So we can write down the total force on the curved part to be minus 2 IRB k hat. And as you see, it's exactly the opposite sign of the force on the straight part. So if you go, we write down things to summarize, the total force uh, is F1 plus F2. And when you add F1 plus F2, you get exactly zero as you expected before, because we know that when you have any kind of wire of any shape uh, with, a, with a current, a closed loop of wire with any shape in a uniform magnetic field, the total force has to be zero.